I noticed the bumps on my forehead. It didn't look like anything I had ever seen before. It was obvious that she was in immense pain. I was afraid things would be pretty grim for Pam's future. Pam Donner suddenly finds her joints locking up when she least expects it. And bizarre growths emerging on her body. I knew there was something seriously wrong with me. I just needed to know what is attacking me. In the fall of 1998, Pam Partington was focused on one thing alone, teaching her special needs students. I love to see kids succeed. I love to help kids to feel good about themselves and to feel confident. And soon after celebrating her 34th birthday, she met Christian Donner, an Austrian who shared Pam's love of the outdoors. When I met Pam, she was a very active person. We went for hikes in the mountains of New Hampshire. We did a lot of traveling, and it was really fun. We both were ready to settle down. And on July 21st, 2000, Pam and Christian tie the knot. Almost immediately, they begin thinking about having children. We always wanted to have a family together. That was on the table from day one. We didn't waste any time because of our ages. And it didn't take long for me to get pregnant. I was very excited because I always wanted to be a mom. Pam's pregnancy goes off without a hitch. And nine months later, the couple welcomes their son, Lucas, into the world. I just fell in love with him as soon as I saw his face. I got pregnant soon after with Sophie. Sophie was a little blonde bundle. Her little brother, Lucas, of course, doted on her, as did Christian and Pam. I could not wish for a better wife and mother. I just marvel when I watch the amount of patience that she has with the kids. Despite having a full-time job and two toddlers, Pam juggles work and family with ease. In fact, life couldn't be better. But one morning, in the fall of 2004, she notices an odd sensation in her right hand. I was trying to write some notes on my dry erase board. I was having trouble with my hand. My fingers really were getting very stiff. And I noticed the sharpest zing right down my hand up into my wrist. She said it was like a stabbing pain and her fingers were almost becoming immobile. When I got home, I took some ibuprofen. While the medication takes the edge off the pain that night, over the next few weeks, the strange ache returns whenever she uses her hand. It hurt, but it was a quick pain, and I didn't think that it was anything too serious. But soon, the pain is affecting both of Pam's hands, and simple everyday tasks are starting to become impossible to complete. I noticed that trying to carry the grocery bags, I would have to drape them over my arm to carry them into the house because I just couldn't rely on my hands. She would just leave them or just come up and ask me to help her. When I was at work, if I tried to pick up a book and hold it with my fingers, I would drop it. As her friend, I was becoming more concerned that what was wrong with her could be quite serious. Christian, his response was, well, you need to make an appointment with a doctor. My primary care physician referred me to see an orthopedic doctor. The orthopedic doctor said, well, I think it's carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a condition in which repeated pressure on a nerve in the wrist causes pain or weakness. In severe cases, patients become unable to use their hands at all and surgery becomes necessary. He did a test for carpal tunnel. At that point, the orthopedic doctor told me that he didn't see any evidence of carpal tunnel and there wasn't much that he could do. So I tried to use my hands less in hopes that the situation would improve. But as time progressed, things just seemed to get worse. Just holding her hand would cause her pain. Strangely, 
As the weeks pass, the debilitating aches intensify. Frightened, Pam schedules an appointment with a local rheumatologist. It was very frustrating. I needed to know what was wrong. The rheumatologist ordered several tests for me. I had to go for blood work to see if I had rheumatoid arthritis because he thought that might be it. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic disease that causes inflammation of the joints and in the worst cases can damage the heart and lungs. I was worried about our future and not knowing if Pam might have a really serious disease. I knew there was something seriously wrong with me and I was so upset. I just needed to know what is attacking me. Over the past nine months, Pam Donner has been enduring crippling pain in her hands. And no doctor can explain why. Now, a specialist suspects that she's suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. While I was waiting for the results, it was difficult to be patient. You look at the worst case scenario, it was really starting to get me to worry too much. When I received the results, I had tested negative for rheumatoid arthritis. I was relieved, but I was really starting to get pretty upset not knowing what it was. Then, just a few weeks later, things take a frightening turn for the worse, forcing Pam to realize just how serious the problem is. I had just arrived at work. I received a call from Christian saying that Sophie had fallen at daycare and needed stitches. I went out the doors and I tried to run to my car and I could not bend my knees enough to run. It was really painful. My knee was really swollen and it was such an awful moment because I knew I needed to get to her as fast as I could and I couldn't do what I needed to do. That really was the toughest part of it. At this point, I was so overwhelmed. At the end of her rope, Pam returns to the rheumatologist demanding answers. When I met with the rheumatologist, he performed uh, different movements with my legs to see how far I could move them comfortably. When he asked me to make a fist, I couldn't really make a fist anymore. The rheumatologist was concerned that I might have lupus. Lupus is a debilitating autoimmune disease that causes chronic inflammation and pain in the joints, skin, kidneys, lungs, and heart. I had to go for blood work, and I was very worried. I thought that if, in fact, that was their diagnosis, um, things would be pretty grim for Pam's future. The next two days pass in slow motion as Pam and Christian anxiously wait for the results. The test came back negative. It was a relief, and then it was not, because we didn't know what it was. Not sure where else to turn for answers, Pam heads home and does the best she can to simply get through each day. It was obvious that Pam was in immense pain just by watching her around the house. I was struggling to walk upstairs. I couldn't kneel down to help give the kids a bath. I couldn't play with the kids on the ground because kneeling was so painful. When I taught Lucas how to ride a bike, that was not something Pam could do. She was upset about not being able to run around with them, and the kids didn't understand that. It was very, very frustrating, and I was depressed. Bit by bit, Pam feels like a mysterious disease is slowly destroying her life. And then, to make matters worse, a bizarre new symptom suddenly emerges. I noticed the bumps on my forehead, and they were very hard. It didn't look like acne. It didn't look like anything I had ever seen before. I thought at the time that it was caused by stress because we certainly had a lot of stress. But soon, the strange bumps begin spreading to other parts of her body. I had on my hands large nodules, probably a good 10. There were several around the neckline. They were very noticeable. The bumps looked wart-like. They were a reddish, brownish color. I was totally perplexed by what was happening. 
So I made an appointment with a dermatologist, and she told me that I had granuloma annulare. Granuloma annulare is a benign skin condition which usually lasts only a year or two. Its cause is unknown. The doctor told me that she could treat it with some prescription ointments and the nodules would go away. And I said, well, but what about the joint pain I've been having? And she said to me, I don't know, I have no idea. It was very, very frustrating. The antibiotic ointment and creams I used twice a day faithfully, and I didn't notice any improvement at all. Pam was self-conscious about those bumps. Um, she would try to cover them with makeup. She would be careful about what she would wear, how long her sleeves were so that they would be covered. I knew that my health was deteriorating quickly, and I knew that I needed to find out what was causing this. I was really scared. 